here, and hi, today I'm at, what is this place? New England Reptile. There's a lot of snakes and stuff in here. I'm in this room with a python reticulatus. What? Are you scared I'm not scared, scared. I, I'm very scientific. Fear is an irrational emotion based on uh, things that I cannot understand. I only understand finite and accurate things. Are you capable of love? Love is just, it's a feeling. It doesn't, there's no essence to it. It's not essential. What do you do in here with all the equipment? Well, I float out here from, uh, I can't tell you, it's a secret. Because I come from a place, it's a scientific lab, subterranean, below any kind of bombing or nuclear threats. Well, anyways, I'm out here now. I've been paid $10,000. <laughs> to come out. What are you laughing about? I just highly doubt it. I don't even that. believe it. Kevin. You're very unprofessional. How could he hire you? You are very unprofessional. But I am here. They've already lost my luggage. I don't have my lab coat. So anyways, I have a micron microscope. And we're going to look at scaleless ball pythons to actually authenticate if these snakes, in fact, are missing their scale. That Kevin says they don't have any scales. And then I go, well, how do you have proof? And he goes, just believe me. He got all emotion on me, and I don't believe in emotion. I believe in fact. Finite, actual facts. And I'm here to qualify. Do these snakes actually have scalation, or is it lost? Let's see what this guy's genetics are doing now. What the hell are you doing? You're not I am now getting ready to perform my first experiment, I am now going to use a micron microscope connected to my power PC to see if the scalation on this ball python is indeed missing the protective scalation. Kevin says, yes, they are fully scaleless snakes. I am here to qualify. Let's do it. Oh, this is uniquely, this is, okay, I see what he's talking about. This is very different. Oh. I do notice a little bit of shed on its face, but look at this. All right. Oh, yes. All right. This animal is missing. Oh, this is remarkable. Look at this. This is, oh, oh this is fantastic. I could spend hours pouring over this animal. Uh, you know, I'm used to doing scalation and scale counts, but how could you do scale counts on a species that no longer has scales? Oh, this is really, this is a mind blower. Oh, goodness. You know, I have studied scaleless, or actually hairless cats. And that is literally, you know, scales and hairs, they're very, very similar. Oh, look at this. This little bit of skin right here. Kevin needs to practice some due diligence and get that little bit of skin off there. But my micron microscope, electron microscope actually, because it's attached to my computer, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing remarkable detail, and there is actually no scales. So a snake like this is literally what is beneath all the protective scalation that normally we protect an animal like this in an arid environment of West Africa. So ball pythons being native to a tropical, arid region will generally need scalation as protective armor to protect them as they crawl through sharp things of foliage and grasslands. And also to protect them when they're securing their food items. Well, this is truly a remarkable snake. This is beautiful. Inherently gorgeous. I understand what he's talking about now. When do I get paid? Is what um is that snake in any danger not having those scales? I mean, uh, you being we the are talking about a cactus. Now listen, I am actually not a pet hobbyist. I'm actually here being brought in as a certified genius. So when we, you know, we're not going to talk about the layman like pet lovers. I am scientific. I come from the scientific community. So. I'm being paid big money, you know? So, I, you know, you with your cut-off shirt and your backward hat, you're all looking tough. I'm not threatened by you because I am scientific. My brain is significantly larger than yours. Have you ever touched one of these animals he has? Yeah. Okay, so these, I see there's a lack of scalation on these. Okay, now, 
I could perform a redundant experiment, use my electron magnifying microscope on these, but uh, so far, I don't really see a need because they all look very same. There's a, they're all uniquely different. Like, gosh, look at the. And he says this is a visual heterozygous. I am noticing with my, wow, that is that is truly remarkable. Look at this, the scalation. This is a, a heterozygous. See, I see scalation on this one, but this one has a rounded smaller beaded scale and then you can see the lack of scalation on the front of its face you know, you know this is very interesting this also reminds me of like paradoxism which is the pigmentation or the partial pigmentation of uh some of these animals so well actually i would like to uh see if we could get a paradox animal we'll talk a little bit about that wow these are these are beautiful well uh, I'm able to authenticate and move forward with my uh, comprehensive understanding that these animals are now lacking scalation. These are, ah, oh, these are amazing. But um, I don't think these animals would do very well in the wild. They don't have the protective armor. So I'm going to go out of limb and say this is strictly something that is suitable for captivity. And I think something like this will require a bit of special attention to uh, to manage them because due to the fact that they have no scalation, they're going to shed more often. And you're also going to need to watch when they shed about making sure that all the shed is removed. And uh, I would anticipate the shed, all these animals, is not going to be attached or fixated to the little scales where it rolls off like a sock, but it might come off more like, you know, something you would know about, a condom. And it would just slide off because there's nothing to adhere the skin to the previous layer of skin. Oh, this this is remarkable. Are you getting uh, that? I am I am truly impressed. I don't even you know I don't even keep snakes. I, I am you know clearly an authority on snakes. But this is something truly remarkable. I have seen that uh, Kevin has scaleless cord snakes, which are. Uh, they're pretty lovely. He's got those rat snake things, but those things are always biting and they're very angry. It's like somebody's like done something bad to them, but they, I guess genetically, they have a, a vendetta against humans. Oh, look at that. All right, well, okay. Now I'm looking at this guy. Oh, what is that? That is remarkable. Now this animal this has one. different scalation. This has what I would call typical scalation. This is atypical. Now, this snake has many different things going on. So, looking at this, this is a clear example of paradoxism. We're having a, a command that is basically not allowing uh, proteins to be created at a certain locus site, which normally would mask. So, if we want to break this down, let's break it down into albinism. So, that would be a T-negative albino. In here, I don't even know what genes we're looking at. But if this was an albino, amelanistic, lacking melanin, and then we compare it to a normal wild type, the phenotype being the wild type, the typical ball python, if I was walking through the grasslands and savannas of Western Africa, I may encounter. So here, if this was just a strict, strictly an albino, and I were to see albinism and the wild type, what is happening is each parent, when they're bred, the sire and the dam contribute half of the genetics. Well, the wild type of normal is dominant to albinism. So at the same address, which is called the locus site, albinism, the gene could exist there, but the dominant, if one parent presents 50% and the other parent presents another 50%, let's say albinism, and this is the dominant wild type. The dominant wild type is dominant to the look of an albino. So as long as there is a command from one parent saying, make normal pigment melanin, then that will mask the albinism. But let's say sometimes we have a sloppy gene and let's just say that one parent said, make normal, 
and the other parent said make albino, normally it would look normal and it would carry the albino gene. But if there's something going wrong and that gene becomes leaky and it says make normal, but only makes 30%, 25% of the normal pigmentation, then some of the albinism is no longer masked. So one parent saying make albino, the other no longer has the 50% to mask the entire body of the snake and now says only make 33%. So that's why we see the albinism leaking through. And that is essentially a working definition in a layman's term. And I understand that much of his audience is very simplistic and simple-minded. Well, anyways, so we're going to try to break it down because Kevin, let's face it, the guy is simple. You know, he gets all emotional, he's fast, he acts like a rabid weasel. He's, he's very stressful to me. Sometimes when I talk to him, you know, constantly trying to veer me off course, I want my money. I want to make sure he's going to give me a check. Sometimes it's a cashier's check, the guy's bouncing checks on me, he's constantly calling You're me. You're calling Kevin a deadbeat right now? From what I understand, my check hasn't gone through. Understanding the genetics, and you know, I, he told me- Hey, to look at the it. camera, Tickle Bum. Yeah, Kevin doesn't, I don't have to tell Kevin this, he knows how to do it. You, do I need to put eyes on the front of my camera? Yeah. Do you, do you realize that usually I'm at a Philips studio? Philips studio. Do you know what that is, Dottie? Look <laughs> at those tattoos. Would Stop you it. have what, uh, a, a, a little child do that? To, oh, what's that? Oh, that looks like a deformed rabbit. They're terrible. Oh, look, marbles. Oh, look at the font. That font is supposed to be scary. What'd you get at the Halloween store? I got them in prison. Yeah. <laughs> You've been to prison? Several times. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, I think my video is over. Uh, we're going to be doing some more videos and hopefully I can get my clothing in. And, uh, but uh, this is Sylvester A. Ticklebob and A stands for Atomic, of course. 